A ton of gold. These four words flashed over the nation's telegraph wires on July 17th, 1897. And the Klondike Gold Rush was born. A little steamer from Alaska had nosed its way through Puget Sound and docked at Seattle. The captain's declaration of his cargo electrified the world. A ton of gold. Within a few weeks, countless thousands of men struck out for America's last and greatest frontier, the Klondike, through which flowed the mightiest river of the north, the Yukon. A year later, the big rush was in full force. It brought every manner of man and woman into the frozen wilderness to meet the multiple challenge of adventure, pioneering, the unknown, and most important, gold. Law and order also came to the Yukon. There were many criminals and ordinary adventurers among the gold seekers who were surprised to find that decency and justice had staunch guardians in the frozen north. The Royal Northwest Mounted Police, whose scarlet tunics and broad-brimmed hats symbolized law and order and protection for honest citizens, kept a watchful eye over the vast stretches of uncharted land. From these outstanding soldiers of government, we created a young sergeant named William Preston. Because of his bravery, resourcefulness, and courage, Sergeant Preston rapidly became one of the best-known and efficient policemen in the Yukon Territory. His friends were legion, and his only enemies were criminals. However, his greatest friend, companion, and helpmate was a dog. Not an ordinary dog in any sense of the word. This dog was a powerful animal, half husky and half shepherd, and possessed of almost human intelligence. He served as a free lead to the team of huskies that carried Sergeant Preston's sled over countless miles of frozen trails. The sergeant had raised him from a pup, and even then, his proud head and lean, muscular body gave the impression of regal strength. And from this came his name, King. King, the wonder dog who was ever faithful in helping his master, Sergeant Preston, bring law and order to the wilderness. Together they met the challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> oh, King, of you husky! King, the swiftest and strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes the trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserved law and order in the Yukon during the gold rush of 98. That was the year that brought over 50,000 men swarming into the Klondike region, and the greed for gold led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, the force preserved a splendid record in maintaining the right. The challenge of the North was answered, and justice ruled triumphant. It had been months since Jim Bixby and his daughter Mary had gone into the great white silences to defy the worst of nature's bitter cold and howling winds. Sergeant Preston had thought about them often as he made the round of his territory. He thought about Mary and her father when he came out of the windswept night into the warmth of Leif Cannard's trading post. Sergeant Preston, oh, I'm glad you got here. How are you, Leif? Well, I'm all right, except I'm worried, mighty worried. I wondered if you'd get here in time. <laughs> oh, steady king. <laughs> Dog's got a better memory than me. You know, he's always tossing a couple of salted fish. Here you are, King. Right out of the barrel. (laughs) How are you traveling now, Sergeant? Sledge and team? No, I left the sledge and team when I saw signs of the spring breakup. It's easier to travel without the team. I don't even need snowshoes half the time. You had any word from up north? No, I intended to ask you if you'd heard from Bixby. Yes and no. Bixby and Mary took a long chance when they went into the uplands to trap. They knew they'd be frozen in for the winter. Oh, you did hear from them? Not direct. One of the breeds came down here. He said they were traveling the home trail. They'll be here one of these days. Oh, good. I might meet them on the trail. I wish you could, Sergeant. I'm worried. Why? The breed said Bixby had his sled loaded down with Herman. Herman? What worries me is that the breed had met others. Do you know who? No. Boss Connett. I want that man. I thought so. He's murdered to get furs. That's it. He knows Bixby is on the trail. Worst of it is, Connett ain't alone. 
Got three or four men with him. Well, thanks for telling me, Leif. Hey, he's starting right out again. The sooner I start, the sooner I'm likely to meet Conant. Bixby will be bait for that crook. And I want to get there before the bait is destroyed. Come on, King. Sergeant Preston made his way through the night in a late blizzard. He and the great dog King were in Collins Canyon when suddenly King froze in his tracks. What's the matter, King? I wish I had eyes like yours. What's ahead of us? Trouble? Hold on there! Steady, King. He can see us against the snow, but he's against the dark wall of this canyon. This is Sergeant Preston! Not yet, King. I saw where the shot came from. I'm coming for you. Don't shoot again. All right, King, take him. Like an arrow from a bow, the dog leaped ahead, streaking across the snow toward the unknown who'd fired three times. There was a sudden cry of fear. No, 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 no. Get this dog. Take him. Call him off. That'll do, King. Down, boy. He almost busted my wrist. He didn't even break the skin. On guard, boy. I I didn't mean... Who are you? I'm an old man, mister. Mighty old man. You fired at me. No. No, I... Are you a policeman? Sergeant Preston. Oh, thank goodness. Thank goodness you've come. Do you generally shoot at people before you know who they are? No. No, Sergeant. I didn't shoot at you. I fired the signal for help. It seemed to me the bullets came pretty close. I fired the signal for help. I'm an old man. Yes, you said that before. I need help, Sergeant. Help to get to town. I lost my pack. My grub. I even lost my match safe. Where are you from? I, I don't know. I've been wandering for days. For weeks, maybe. I lost all track of time. Well, there'll be some kindling at the base of this wall. I'll get a fire going and have some warm food for you in a minute. Oh, Sergeant, you... You come from Providence. I need help. I need it bad. Yeah. What's your name? Gage. Glenn Gage. That's my name. I... I'm an old man. Well, we're sheltered from the wind here. Tell me about yourself while I get these twigs lighted. Uh, ain't much to tell, Sergeant. King, what's the matter with you, boy? Uh, let me have that knife and I'll whittle some shavings to help the fire along. You don't know what this will mean to me. King, what are you digging for, fella? What's the matter with you? Get away from there, you mother! Oh, that's Gage. Don't try to kick that dog. Well, he... What have you found there, King? Now, let me see, boy. Here, Gage. What's this? I I don't know. Is this the pack you said you'd lost? I don't know whose pack that is. Well, it's hardly likely someone else would have lost it here. It must have. Uh, I don't know anything. Been here but a short time. It was on top of the frozen ground. You buried it in the snow. Now, why? Well, it's a long story, Sergeant. If you'd put some food on the fire and give me a chance to tell you, I'll just whittle some shavings and get the fire going good. I'm an old man. I... I'll show you. Oh, you. That dog. That's enough. Oh. Oh. Down, King. Now, boy. It's all right now, fella. Guess I was careless to let him borrow my knife. Get up, Gage. Oh, my God. You're not hurt. You've got a lot to account for. You're not an old man. You straightened up fast when you started to put that knife in me. You lied about losing your pack, and you lied about shooting the signal for help. All right, I lied, Preston. What about it? Take me into the jail if you want to. It's known that sooner or later I'd come through this canyon. Now, why were you here to shoot me? I won't talk. I think you will. Were you here to delay me? I've got nothing to say, Preston. Take me to jail and try to prove that I aim to kill you. See if you can prove that. you got nothing else on me. No, Gage, you're not going to jail. You're going to tell me why you're here. Or should I turn King loose? Oh, that dog... He's ready. He hates men who try to kill me. You can't prove anything. You've got nothing against me. All right, we'll see what King can do. No, no, don't do that. Don't turn him away. Talk. Well, I... I wish to delay you, that's all. I didn't mean to kill you. What did you think that knife would do? I only wanted to delay you, that's all, Preston. He made me do it. Who made you do it? Boss Connor. Where is he? Well, he and his gang, they're north of here. Waiting for Bixby? How, how did you know that? Pick up your pack. What? Where are we going? We're going north. We're going to travel until we meet Jim Bixby. Several hours to the north, 
Daybreak fell on a small cabin that had been built for the convenience of anyone who traveled in the wilderness. Jim Bixby opened his eyes to see Mary at a small fireplace. Just outside the door, the sledge was piled high with pelts. Four dogs slept beneath the new fallen snow. Oh. Mary? Time to rise and shine, Dad. This is our big day. The last day on the trail. If we shove on hard, we'll reach the settlement before another sunrise. Uh, the end of the trail. The end of all our hardships. Mary, it's hard to realize. But it's true. And you'll know it's true when you sample the breakfast I fixed. Coffee and the last of the flour for the biscuits. Yeah. Mm, smells first rate. I've opened the last can of tomatoes, too. We're going to feast this morning. Then we can keep going a long time. Mary, we can't spread ourselves on food. We've got to be spared. Those days are over, Dad. Gone for good. We're near the end of the trail. And when you sell the furs, we'll have all the money we'll ever need. Back to the States. Uh, back to the States. Oh, nice house. Warm summers and mild winters. And books to read and people to talk to. Father, all ours now. Uh, it's been a hard trip, Mary. Not many girls could have stood it. Oh, it's been worthwhile. Hey, how are the dogs? They feasted last night. I gave them the last of the frozen fish. They're filled up for the rest of the trip. Is the sled all right? Sure it is. There's no one here but us. Well, you take a look out the window, Mary. Make sure the sled is where we left it. It's there. Just as we left... What's the matter? What's the matter? Funny. Was there an arrow stuck in the door when we came in last night? Well, I didn't see it. There's one there now. An arrow? I'll see what it is. Well, that weren't there last night. I know it wasn't. There's a note fastened to it. Here. Uh, Mary... If someone put that arrow into the door, it means we ain't alone here. What's the note say? Mary, read this note. What's it say? You leave that cabin, you'll be shot. We're watching. Dad, who wrote this? I'm hanged if I know. What do we do? Find out if this is true. Well, blame soon, find out. Dad, be careful. Dad! Uh, the dirty weasels. They're over there. I saw where the shot came from. They shot into the door near me to show they meant what they said. Where'd the shot come from? Over there on that steep slope. Yes? There are a couple of big boulders at the base of it. Someone's camped back of those boulders. Dirty crooks, they meant it. What's their idea? Let me see that arrow. Here. Uh, I'd like to shoot it back at those crooks and drill it between their eyes. Some distance away, Boss Connett and two others crouched in a small camp between big rocks and the base of a sheer slope. That shot made the old man jump back plenty fast. Did you see him, boss? Yes, I saw him. Well, don't put the next bullet so close to him. Connor's a good shot, Butch. He won't hit the old galoot unless he wants to. He better not want to. Maybe he's wanted by the law, but we ain't. We got this plan so there won't be no suspicion of murder. Seems to me we're taking a roundabout way to get them furs. Oh. Seems that way to you, eh, Connor? Yeah. We could go in shooting and take them. Well, you've got nothing to lose, but we have. Me and Lefty want to live to enjoy the cash we'll get. Butch is right. If the Mounties find Bixby and his daughter dead from bullets, they'll know it's murder. If they find them dead from starvation, they got no proof of murder. Well, that means we'll have to be here for days. Bixby spent months getting them furs. We can afford a few days. Butch is right, Connor. What's a few days while we wait for those two to starve? All right, but if they make a break for it, we shoot. Sure. If they try to cross the open country, then we can shoot. Yeah, but they won't make a break for it. They'll stay in the cabin. It's human nature to hang on while there's hope. Hey, boss, look over yonder. Two men coming from the timber and breaking over the open country toward the cabin. Hey, wait, let me watch. One of them's a Mountie. See? It's that sergeant. Sergeant Preston. He's been after you, boss. Yeah, so he finally caught up with me. Well, drill him. Now, hold on, Butch. Put down that rifle. That's Gage with him. He's captured Gage. Uh, Gage is the one we left in the canyon in case the Mountie did come over the trail. Gage must have made a mistake somewhere. Plan was for him to take Preston a long way south of here. Now he's captured Gage. He's going straight to the cabin. Gage must have squealed. That's his hard luck. Now we gotta shoot. We gotta do nothing to saw it. But if the Mountie sees that note and knows we're here, what then? Our plans stay the same. We'll let the Mountie into the cabin, but we don't let him out. Savvy? He'll be found dead of starvation along with the others. Go back! Mountie, go back! The old man's yelling out the door. Telling the Monty to turn back. Back! Don't come here, Monty. Turn back as you value your life. Don't come no closer. Oh, it's no 
tell you. Oh, he hears me, but he won't turn back. Oh, Mary, why don't he get away and save himself? He's bringing someone with him. Looks like a prisoner. Look at the way that big dog guards the man. The Mountie's a sergeant. Sergeant! Is your name Bixby? Yes, but you shouldn't have come here. You'll be trapped with the rest of us. I thought if you escape and steal your purse. Look I... out, an arrow! <laughs> All right, King. Steady, boy. Steady. That's the second arrow those rats are sent over here. There's another note fastened to it. Behind those boulders, huh? Yes. They already sent us one note telling us they'd shoot us if we left here. Oh, wait. Yeah, this note is about the same. Only I'm counted with you people now. Gage, you are too. I... I am. Yes. Your own men have turned on you, Gage. You're here to starve with the rest of us. Why didn't you go back when I yelled at you? I tried to tell you. Because I thought I might be able to think of a way out. Oh, can't make a run for it. Those critters would mow us down. They're after the furs there at the door, and they'll get him. Get inside, Gage. Bixby, this man's name is Gage. He was one of the gang. He's a prisoner of ours now. My name is Sergeant Preston. This is my dog, King. We'll hold a council of war and find a way to beat those fur thieves. A council of war against unknown odds. Will Sergeant Preston and his friends break through the trap the outlaws have laid? We'll continue our story in just a moment. But first... Now to continue our story. In a small cabin in the midst of a vast expanse of open wilderness... Jim Bixby and his daughter were trapped by thieves who planned to get a fortune in ermine from the old trapper. Sergeant Preston captured one of the thieves and brought him to the cabin. King, the big lead dog and companion of the Mountie, lay near the door guarding the prisoner, while Bixby, Mary, and Sergeant Preston sat at a table. I don't see any chance for us to get out of here, Sergeant. We can't stay long without grub. Well, I have enough to last one man two days. Which would last the four of us about half a day. We'll go on short rations. Yeah, let the prisoner starve, the rat. No, I want him to stay alive so he can be turned in with the others. Gage. What is it? How many are over there? I ain't talking. By turn, if you ain't talking, you ain't eating. I ask you a question. I told you I wasn't talking. Go with that dog. Out. All right, all right, I'll talk. There's three men over there. Steady, King. I can tell you they're all crack shots. They're good with a bow and arrow to hit the door of this shack at a hundred yards. They're better with rifles. The plan is to starve us, huh? I don't... Well, yes. Then there'll be no mark of injury. It'd be practically impossible for the Crown to prove a murder charge. (laughs) Clever idea. I may as well tell the rest of the scheme. When we're all dead, they'll come here and replace the ermine pelts with some cheaper stuff. And when the next snowfall hides the tracks, there won't be a thing to show it was anything but starvation. They'll, of course, make a thorough search to be sure we leave no notes. Yeah. Yeah, It's bad enough for us to starve, but those poor dogs of mine, huskies and good ones. Well, we're not going to sit here for a week or two and die a slow death of starvation. I don't know what we can do about it. It ain't likely anyone will come this way. If anyone did come here, they'd be trapped the same as Sergeant Preston was. They'd be allowed to get to the cabin, but they couldn't leave. Uh, Preston, I've got a scheme. What is it, Gage? Let me go over to the men... They won't shoot me if they see me coming toward them. Maybe I can persuade them to let you all go if you give them a share of the skins. Gage, we don't negotiate with prisoners. But it might mean that we'll... It mean four men against us instead of three. Uh, Look here, Sergeant. How'd it be for you to change clothes with Gage? You go forward with his clothes on, and they think it was their pal until he got close enough to open fire. I'd stake my life on your shooting, even if it was three to one. That's an idea. And you could take your dog. He could fight, I'll bet. No, Bixby. Well, maybe, even if I do walk stooped over... I could wear his clothes and get away with it. I ain't a bad shot. I'm going to go forward to meet those men. In your uniform? Yes. I doubt if they'll fire on this uniform. King, I want you to stay right here. Understand? They'll fire on you. Well, we'll see. No, no, King. You stay here. Guard. Sergeant Preston. Yes? Your dog. I've heard about you and King. Couldn't the dog take a message to the town? To the constable? King would have to cross the open space between here and the trees, Mary. Those men would drop him before he got halfway. But maybe after dark. The dog would be easily seen even at night against the background of snow. And you can bet your boots those men will have someone watching every minute of the time. I'm going toward them. But if they shoot you... If I'm found shot, another Mountie will take my place. Those men will never escape. But we don't want you to get shot. You sure will be. 
Those men want to get the furs in an easy way if they can, but they won't stop at murder. Don't risk your life just yet, Sergeant Preston. Maybe someone else will come along and we can yell to them and tell them the situation before they get here in the same trouble we're in. There's little chance anyone will come over this route, Bixby. Let me go out there. I'm an old man. They've got to show themselves to shoot me, and when they do, you can open fire from here. No, no, you stay here. Gage will shoot, too. His life is in the balance. Both you and Gage can open fire on them when they stick their heads up to get me. The trouble with your plan, Bixby, is this. They will get you. Well, I'm an old man. I, I don't count. I don't expect to live much longer anyhow. Pa, please. The only thing that counts with me is to see Mary safe and sound. I'd be glad to die if, if by doing it she could get back to civilization with the furs. No one is going to sacrifice his life. We're going to try to work out some scheme to outwit those crooks. But what is there? Well, I don't know yet. We'll take inventory. Huh? Well, before we can evolve any plan, we must know what we have to work with. Now, I've been traveling light. I carry little equipment. Everything we have is in the duffel bags over there. All right, let's look at them. I've got quite a bit of ammunition left. We didn't use much of that. Well, ammunition would be all right if we were going to have a long, drawn-out siege, but I think there'll be very little shooting. I'm afraid there isn't anything we can use. Yeah, yeah. what's this? Oil? Oh, yes, coal oil. When we started out on the trip, we had a little stove along, and I figured to burn oil in it when we ran up against a shortage of firewood. But we didn't use it much. It didn't give enough heat. It was one of those newfangled contraptions. Oil and water never mix. What's that? Uh, I, was, I was just thinking. What about oil and water? This oil could be poured on top of a pool of water and it would burn. But there ain't no pool of water around here, nothing like it. And even if there was, what good would it do? Maybe we can make use of this oil. How much of it have you? Uh, there's three tins of it all told. Here's one of them here. Uh, where's the other, Mary? Right here. I don't see where the oil is going to help any. No? Keep your mouth shut, Gage. This ain't none of your business. Set these tins over near the door there. We'll use the back way when it gets dark. Night won't help. And those crooks can see the back door almost as well as they can the front. Well, there's a little difference. We'll have to count on that. I don't understand. I'm going to write a note. Come here, King. <coughs> King will take a message to the constable for us. But the dog will have to cross that open space. I know it. And, and they'll see him. Even if he does go out the back door, they'll see him and shoot. Not if we make them look somewhere else. <laughs> Time dragged slowly for the remainder of the day. When darkness came, the Mountie called the big dog to his side and fastened a carefully written message to his harness. Then he began to tell King what he wanted. King, I'm fastening a note to your harness. This is to go to the constable, King. Constable. <laughs> Look at the way that dog cocks his head to one side as if he's trying to understand. Constable. King, go to constable. Does he know what you mean? He will in a minute. Look, King, I'm sending you to Constable. He's got it. He understands. Look at that dog go on the door to get loose and be on his way. But he'll be shot if he goes. Down, King. Down, boy. Down. Here, Mary. Take hold of the leash. He won't bowl if it's held. Where are you going? Just a few yards outside the cabin door. I'm going to spill this oil on top of the snow. Bixby, bring that to the can. Maybe they'll see us. No, they won't. But as long as we keep the cabin back of us... I'll pour out the oil. You got the third can, ain't you? Yes. Spread it around. Don't get it too near the cabin. I savvy. I want to give the king every chance to get through. Well, I still don't see how pouring out this oil will give the dog a chance. Look at how white the snow is. You can see a critter a third the size of king running across it. I think king will get through without being seen. Well, this can's empty. But so are these. Now we'll torch a match in the oil. Set fire to it? Yes, that's the idea. Well, here it goes. We look at it spray. To the cabin, come on. Look at the flames. They're almost as high as the cabin. If a wind comes up, it'll blow those flames back here and fire the cabin. Well, no wind now, and we'll hope that none comes up within the next few minutes. Here, give me the leech, Mary. And open the back door. Here. I still don't understand how I'm this is going to I'm counting on the fire, distracting their attention so they won't notice King. All right, this is your chance, boy. Constable. Constable, you understand? <laughs> All right, King, go. <laughs> With the speed of an arrow leaving a giant bow, the great dog king left the small back door of the cabin and raced across the snow. He ran swiftly and low. His dark, muscular body was plainly outlined against the whiteness of the snow. But for the moment, the outlaws were engrossed by the unusual sight of towering flames in front of the cabin. They didn't realize what had happened until the oil fire had burnt out. Meanwhile, king had crossed the open space and was on his way to town. He raced through Collins Canyon, then out of the canyon to the town and through the streets until he found an office that was familiar. He leaped and barked at the door. Ah, it's a dog. Come here, 
Hello. Come here. Oh, what's the trouble? Constable, that's Sergeant Preston's dog. It's King. King, eh? Here, King. Now, now, what's the trouble? Now, where's Preston? Constable, look. There's a message tied to his harness. Huh? Oh, so there is. Steady, King. We'll see what this says. Better get ready for action. If Preston is sending messages, it means there's something stirring. Right. What's the message? Here, here, I was right. It is a call for action. Read this. Hours passed with Sergeant Preston frequently looking at his watch. He'd allowed a certain length of time for the officers of the law to get into position. Bixby and Mary were increasingly anxious when the minutes piled up with no sign of the returning dog or sign of help. He hasn't returned. And he has had ample time, hasn't he, Sergeant Preston? I think he's had all the time that's required. Then why ain't there a sign of help? What sort of sign are you looking for, Bixby? Lawman. What do you suppose would happen if they came out of that woods and headed for this cabin the way I did? Huh? Well, isn't it likely they'd be trapped here just as I was? I thought about that and wondered what you had in mind. I gave those men specific instructions in a very definite location. Well, now the zero hour is at hand. What do you mean? I'm going to make the arrest. You mean you're, you're going after the boss? That's exactly what I mean. Then Gage will come back and pick you up. They'll shoot you. I doubt it. Please, don't go out there. They won't shoot. The fur thieves saw Preston leave the cabin and start toward them. Boss Connett turned to Butch and said, Wake Lefty up. I'm awake. It's too cold here to sleep. What's up? The Mountie. Hey there, Preston, get back or we let you have it. Not this day, my lad. Hey, who's on the it? ledge above us. Hey, watch out on them, boys. Take them, King. Look out, look out. Get off of me. Get out of my way. Let me use my gun. There'll be no gunplay this game. Get That's it, King. Keep them busy. Take this dog off me. Take him off. Down, King. There, that does it. Don't, don't shoot. I give up. Down, King. Uh, Preston, is it really Boss Connett? There he is, Constable. Connett, you're under arrest for murder. The rest will be tried for other crimes. Thanks to that dog and the message he brought. We followed your instructions to the letter. You knew where to come? Aye. And we came and waited till you made the move. You gave us plenty of time. Put your handcuffs on these men and then come with me to the cabin. The fourth crook is there. (laughs) Yes, King. This case is closed. Upholding the motto of the Northwest Mounted Police, Sergeant Preston and the Great Dog King maintain the right and get their man. Don't miss their next thrilling adventure when they meet the challenge of the Yukon once again next week at this same time. On King! On you, Husky! Challenge of the Yukon, a copyrighted feature of the Challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, brought to you every week at this same time, originated in the studios of WXYZ Detroit. The characters and events in tonight's drama were fictitious. Bob Height speaking. This is the Michigan Radio Network.